Okay, good morning, everyone. We are picking up on handout nine, chapter 10, and we're just continuing our discussion. A lot of this we kind of talked about, but just wanna make sure that you're aware of the important controls for customer purchases. And this is the first one that we're getting. So if you take a step back, what are effective internal controls over cash is what we're looking at. And so cash must be controlled from when it's received until deposited in the bank. So we start on page four of your notes. Does anybody not have a copy of the notes? And remember you only have one handout for Chapter seven, even though it says part two. My ears are okay. Okay, the first one is register receipts for every transaction. Separation of duties. Multiple counts of funds. Cash balances are compared to daily receipts. Accounting gets receipts, but doesn't handle cash. The last one would be bank reports are reconciled and differences are investigated immediately. Give you a minute to get those all down. Now I know we talked about this scenario, but if any of these you don't remember from our last class, please let me know. All right, we'll move on to important controls for mail-in payments. So separation of duties for receiving the mail and accounting for the payments. So one person opens the mail, takes all the checks out, I'm assuming most people aren't sending actual cash and then prepares the deposit slip to go to the bank. Same scenario, accounting gets a copy of the deposit slip, but they never handle the cash. They never have access to it. That cash goes out. 
I'm sorry, I forgot to stuff one more in here. Cash is regularly deposited in the bank. And this can be via armored car. Or secure deposit. Okay, the second one, our checks are collected, stamped. And this would be like deposit only or something along that lines with the company stamp. And sent to the bank daily. Third one is deposit slip is provided to accounting. And then the last one in this category is accounting reconciles the bank records with the accounting records. So I don't go too much into this one and kind of when you get into accounting and information systems, you get a little bit more about this, but you want to make sure that the service used is appropriately secure to ensure accurate collection or payments and accounting for the payments. A, control over cash payments should provide reasonable assurance that payments are made only for authorized transactions.
cash is used effectively and efficiently. meaning that it is invested when possible and discounts are taken when offered. Those are just a couple examples. The meaning should be examples. Give everybody a minute to get that down. Remember, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay, some important controls over cash payments would be that a voucher, purchase order, invoice system is in place for authorizing and recording liabilities and cash payments. So it means that your accounts payable department, when it gets an invoice, it checks to make sure that before it pays it, that they have the proper support. Was it received? Was the quantity accepted? Do they match? And so you wanna make sure that you have the support for that documentation before anything is paid. You wanna make sure that all payments are authorized with multiple signatures for large payments, and these would be wires or checks. So the way you can do this in small companies is that you keep the checks in kind of the controller's office. And so accounts payable will set up what needs to be paid out and then they'll say, okay, I'm ready to do a check run. Whoever's in the other department or in that supervisory role then sets up the checks on the printer and that other person prints the checks. And then before they're released, the controller reviews them, checks any of them that need additional follow-up on signs the big ones, and then the payroll person goes through and usually stamps the other ones with the signatures for the checks once they're ready to go. But you had two different people, two different levels of security checking the checks and making sure that they're valid to go out. I worked in a small company and our owner used to check all the checks before they went out because that was one of the easiest ways you could steal money is set up a fake vendor and mail a check to that vendor. So he knew all of the checks that were going out and he was able to track everything. So having a second set of eyes on that is important. Any questions about the procedures? Okay, so we're getting into arguably the most important 
aspect of controlling cash and it's bank reconciliations. Now, back in the old days, you didn't know what you had in the bank until the bank sent you a statement. Now, of course, we can check on a daily basis, but most of the time you're not, accountants aren't sitting there looking at what's going in and out of the bank transactions. Now you might have it flagged and you can even do this with your own. You can set up warnings on your bank, right? If there's a charge from overseas or if there's a check for you know more than $10,000 or if your balance gets low and they can do the same thing. So they may have somebody that's monitoring kind of the daily alerts, but you want to make sure that somebody on a monthly basis is at least going through all the transactions and they're doing it on a bank reconciliation. So some of the important terms, balance per bank. This is the balance in the bank statement. Sorry, it should be ending balance. Your balance per book or financial statements would be the ending, and we're talking about cash account, by the way, in the financial statements. Then we have deposits in transit. These are deposits made prior to the end of the period, but not recorded in the bank statement. So accounting is kind of annoying in that, you know, we pick our days to end the period. We say it's at the end of the month. The end of the month can fall on a weekend and you can still be making deposits for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because each day you're depositing to the bank. But the bank is not open Friday night, Saturday morning, and Sunday. So they'll record all three of those deposits on Monday. But what happens? That's the next month, right? When the month expires, that's the next month. So it doesn't show up on that statement that you have for the month, the month ending. So in your financial statements, you show this deposit, but on the bank, it doesn't. So it's a reconciling item. Outstanding checks. These are checks written by the company that haven't been presented at the bank yet. Revenues reported in the bank statement. So these are things that you sort of weren't aware of that the bank may have collected. And some of those things would be like interest revenue. Rebates, et cetera. Those are just small things that the bank would record that you might not have in the book check because you weren't aware of it until you got the bank statement. 
expenses reported in the bank statement. These would be bank fees, interest expense. Etc. Accounts receivable collections by the bank. Occasionally, um, companies will submit directly payments directly to the bank. So payments for the company made to the bank. Not made, made's not the right word I'm looking for. Payments for the company presented to the bank. And this could also include electronic payments. Some companies have taken an out collecting checks altogether. So their accounting department doesn't do any of it. They pay the bank to do it. So your collections address says mail payments to PO box XXX, and they send those payments there. Well, that payment is really a bank box. The bank collects the payments, puts the invoice information and deposits the cash. Why is that beneficial? You get the cash quicker and Hopefully the bank doesn't make the mistakes and your accounting doesn't have to take the time to do that. They just look at what's been deposited from the daily reports and enter that into the accounting information. And then the accounts payable clerk reconciles that with the balances that are owed, the invoices, checks off those invoices as paid. Okay. Insufficient funds checks. These are checks written to the company that the customer didn't have enough funds in their account. So the payment is rejected. Book errors are errors made in the accounting records. And keep in mind, this is for the company. And then bank errors are errors made by the bank. I used to think the bank didn't make errors, but they do. They hopefully make a, a lot less errors than we do, but from time to time they do. And why is that? They're human. That's exactly it. When humans have to do anything, we make mistakes. Any questions there? Sorry, I rolled up a little bit early. Everybody have that down? Okay, let's look at practice number one. So it says each of the following items A through G indicate whether amount, whether its amount affects the bank or book side of the reconciliation represents an addition or subtraction in a bank reconciliation and requires an adjusting entry. So the first one is interest on cash balance. So are we gonna make an adjustment to the bank or to the book? So we think about where does this information, where is it known? Who knows about it? The bank knows about it, right? Because it's going to be in your bank statement 
And so we have to adjust the book balances. Book, book balances, meaning your financial statements. And this is interest on the cash balance. So this would be revenue. So this is gonna be added. And anytime we have a book adjustment, then we're going to have an adjusting entry. So the answer is yes. All right, now you guys try B through G. I'll give you guys like five minutes. You can talk to each other, you can ask questions, but think about who knows the information and who doesn't. If the bank doesn't know the information, then we have to adjust the bank balance. If the financial statements, if we're not aware of it, we find out about it from the bank statement, then we have to adjust the books. And the only adjusting entries are for when we have to adjust the books. And where it's add or subtract, it's how does that change your cash balance? Are we adding it or subtracting it to whatever category we put it in, book or bank? Yeah. How are we doing over here? So the bank service charge, they know about it already. So what do we have to adjust? Yeah. Right. Yeah, what you're thinking is what, when we look at bank or book, what do you have to adjust? Do you have to adjust the bank balance or do you have to adjust the book balance? So if it's known like that first one, we got it from the bank statement. So we had to adjust the book balance. And if you're worried about having this neat, just put a little abbreviation in the corner, you know, that you can cross off if you want to go back over them and keep it neat. These young ladies are very smart. I heard that they talk, but if you guys wanna talk about them, you can.
you like for yeah, perfect five. Now, I know most of you are kind of struggling through this, and I'm not expecting you to be done yet, but what we're going to do is we're going to jump down to the next example, and then I'll let you come back to this one. And so what I'm doing here is I'm setting up kind of a generic bank reconciliation, and the way that I'm setting this up is that you'll be able to use it to do to solve most of your problems just by plugging in the numbers because the framework is almost always the same. The only thing that kind of throws a monkey wrench in the works is when you have errors because then you have to do a lot more thinking about all the accounts that are affected. All right. So it doesn't matter on the top which one you use. Um, you have balance per book, which these are from your financial statements. And then you have balance per bank. And this is from the bank statement. And you start with the ending cash balance. Now keep in mind they have multiple accounts, right? This isn't gonna be the cash for the whole company. This is the cash balance for that account. And then you would add interest revenue. Add receivables collected. These can be accounts or notes receivable collected. You're going to deduct bank fees. You're going to deduct interest expense. You're gonna deduct NSF checks. And then you may add or deduct errors in book. So it really depends on the error that you made. You could have to add or deduct it. And at the end, you have your reconciled balance. And this should, of course, equal the reconciled balance on the bank side. Just give everybody a minute to finish writing and catch up.
Okay. So now we have the ending cash balance that we start with. And we would add deposits and transit. And we would deduct outstanding checks. And then depending on the error, we would add or deduct errors by bank. So any of the transactions on the right adjust the bank balance. Any of the transactions on the left adjust the book balance. So when you see these up here, you should be able to look and say, okay, what side is it on, left or right? And knowing left is book, right is bank. Now, again, you don't have to always set it up that way, but it's just the way that it's set up for the class. And so now go back and look at B through G. I'll give you about two minutes and then we'll talk our way through it. Okay, so let's walk through them now. The first one that we're gonna start with is bank service charges. Okay, when you think about what do I need to adjust, you think about where did I get the information? So I got the information from my bank statement, right? So that means I would have to adjust the book. And of course, because they're service charges, these are fees. And so we would have to subtract from our cash balance. And because it is made to the book, every time we have a book entry, we have an adjusting entry. 
debit memos. So this is another thing that the bank provides and says your account has had a deposit. And so this is what you would get if they collected something for you directly by the bank. So we would find out on our bank statement or electronically, and we'd have book adjustment that we'd have to make. And we have to think about, does this increase our balance? Does it decrease our balance? And you have to think kind of differently with a bank in that a bank has debits and credits that are opposite of what we've learned so far. For your bank, a credit increases the balance, a debit decreases the balance so that you have to subtract this. outstanding checks and so we know the outstanding checks but the bank doesn't know about it so we have to adjust the bank balance we have to subtract it because they'll eventually reduce that balance and because it's for the bank there is no entry required credit memos so this is the book this is the opposite of a debit memo, so we would add it and we would need to make an adjusting entry. Insufficient funds checks or NSF checks. The bank knows about them, but we don't, so we have to adjust the book. It's going to reduce our balance. And because it's a book, we have to make an entry. Outstanding deposits. The bank isn't aware of them. It's going to add to the balance and we don't make entries for the bank balance. Did that help a little bit by kind of getting asked the question, trying to work it out in your head, getting some feedback and then coming back to it? Good. Don't tell anybody else I know what I'm doing. They'll want me to do more stuff. All right. So we talked about the generic bank account. You can use this to do any of them. But I'm going to go ahead and walk you through an example. Example one. Just take about 30 seconds to read it, and then we'll start to walk through. Okay, so it says, at the close of business on July 31, 2024, its cash account shows a 22,352 debit balance. And Nolan's July bank statement shows 21,332. So your balance per book, ending balance, is going to be 22, oops, 22, 352 and the ending balance per bank is 21 bless you 21 332 okay it says for letter a outstanding checks as of July 31st, total 3,713. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put the letter A, and then I'm gonna put deduct outstanding checks. And so that amount 
3,713. B, the July 31 bank statement included a debit memorandum for bank services. So they reduced our cash by $41. The company has not yet recorded the cost of services. So our balance per book for letter B, we're going to deduct bank fee to minus $41. C, it says, in reviewing the bank statement, a check written by the company was mistakenly recorded on the company's books at $99. The check was 90, but we recorded it at 99. And so C, sorry, C, we have an error in our books. And that resulted in $9 coming out of our account. So we have to add this $9 back. D, the July 31 cash receipts of 4,724 were placed in the bank's night depository after banking hours and not recorded in the bank statement. So D, add deposit in transit, and that's plus 4,724. And then it says the bank statement included a $23 credit for interest earned on cash in the bank. So here we have E, and this would be interest revenue. And this would be plus $23. Now calculate the adjusted balance. Okay, does anybody have a number? 22343. And if we did it properly and there wasn't an error in the question, we should have 22343 here as well. So, what would you put on your financial statements? You would use this reconciled balance. If this was your only cash account, this would be the cash on the financial statement. So which one is more accurate? The answer is neither, that you've got to reconcile it because of timing differences. Okay, now I've been talking about whenever you make entries or whenever you have to adjust the book balance, we have to make entries to record those. So at the end of the month, we would make our entries and so our entry for E, the first one, would be a debit to cash for $23 and a credit to interest revenue for $23. For B, it would be a debit to bank fees expense for $41, and it would reduce our cash 
by $41. And C, we have to think about what was the entry made when we originally got the cash. So we took a check in and we probably credited somebody's accounts payable too much because it was 99 or accounts receivable too much. And so what we have to do is credit that back to accounts receivable. So it would be cash right? Because it says, let me make sure. A check written by the company was mistakenly reported. So cash and accounts payable, sorry. And this would be $9 on each side. Bless you. Any questions? Okay, so the next part is we're gonna talk a little bit about petty cash funds. And so what is petty cash? It's a small cash fund used for daily expenses that would otherwise be cumbersome to run through the accounts payable process. Think about you're running a company and your company's plumbing and heating. You've got parts in a warehouse that are an hour, two hours away from where your employee might be, but a lot of times they'll have stores in the local area and if they just need a specific piece, they can go to that store and get the same thing. Probably a little more expensive, but it'll save them from having to waste two hours to come back and forth. And so you just have them buy it there and then you have them bring you the receipt and you give them the petty cash and you keep the receipt. And then when the petty cash needs to be refilled later, you record the expenses based on the receipts, excuse me. All right, so let's take a look at example two. So the first part says, prepare the journal entry to establish the petty cash fund. And all you do with this is you debit petty cash and in this case, it was for $150 and you credit cash for Now, part B says, prepare the journal entry to replenish the petty cash fund. So we're focused now on February 10th, the fund is replenished and the following receipts for items paid out of the petty cash fund are recorded. So we're gonna go ahead and debit office supplies for $34. Debit postage expense. And so we have $28 here and the cost paid FedEx to send an urgent letter, $10. So that total 28 plus 10 is 38. We're also gonna have a debit to store supplies. And that's for $12. And then it says a minor repair on office equipment. So we would debit repairs or repair expense. And that would be for $52. 
and our credit is to cash. We total that up and there's $136. Occasionally, petty cash is off a dollar, two dollars. We're we're not going to send our employees chasing around a hundred and fifty dollar fund for a dollar or two. So we just debit it to a petty cash over or short. If need be, or over or short. Any questions on there? Okay. Okay, got a few things for you here. So we're talking about analyzing days cash on hand and how you calculate that. And it's cash and short-term investments divided by the daily cash operating expenses. The cash and short-term investments are taken either from the period end or year end balance sheet. And the daily cash operating expenses are operating expenses minus depreciation. Why do we take out depreciation? When we think about depreciation, what is depreciation? What's that? Well, not, it, it, is a, it is a way of recording the aging and use of it. And so it does show that it is decreasing in value, but that's not necessarily what it is. It's accounting for the expense, right? So we, we bought that building or we made that building but that building is supposed to give us a certain useful life, right? Hopefully 20, 30, 50 years. So we expense it by depreciation. But depreciation is just an accounting term to recognize expense for long-term assets. There is no cash related to depreciation. So it is taken out of the expenses because it's presumed you don't have to pay depreciation. You're just reporting it as an expense. And this is kind of where like finance separates from accounting because finance uses a lot of the cash values. So this is something that you'll see them do often. They take out the accounting or they use the accounting, then get it all down to cash. So their focus is more on the cash flow statement than on the income statement and the balance sheet. Whereas accountants focus income statement, balance sheet, and then provide information on the cash flows. So we have a little practice question here. Let's try those. Okay, it says the company deposited a check for written for $325. However, the accountant entered the amount as 235 into the books. So essentially less than what 
cash we should have received. And so on the bank statement, the amount deposited was correctly entered as 325. So on the bank reconciliation, we're gonna end up adding it to our books, right? Because it's a book error. And in this case, we're adding it back. So the answer is a added to the balance per books. Guys, get number two, and then we'll go over it. Hey, it says the company correctly wrote a check for $192, but mistakenly recorded the check as $129 on its books. So that means we're showing that we have more cash than we really do. And we're also showing that we still owe whoever it is, another $68 or 70 bucks, whatever that difference is. And since it's our error, it's going to be added to the, or the books. And it's just a question of whether or not it's added or deducted. And so in this case, we know our cash balance should be lower. So we have to deduct it from the balance for books. While you guys are working on that one, I'm gonna pass out the next handout for chapter eight. You would take one and pass it down. For each of you, you're welcome. Right. You're welcome. It says the accountant for Midway Company is reconciling the company's cash account with the bank statement. Below is a list of items that will be included in the reconciliation. Write the letter for each item as either an addition or subtraction from either the bank or book balance. Okay, Midway deposited $200 worth of checks that are not on the bank statement. So write the letter for each item as either an addition or a subtraction from either the bank or the book balance. And so we have to adjust the bank, right? And we have to add that balance. Customer's check for $118 was returned by the bank for insufficient funds, and that's the book, and we have to deduct from our cash. There are 2,980 worth of outstanding checks that gets adjusted on the bank side, and it gets deducted.
The bank collected a note receivable for Midway Company worth $500. So this is going to be an adjustment to our book. And it's going to be added. The bank charged Midway Company $10 to collect the note receivable. So we're going to make an adjustment to the book. And this is going to deduct from our balance. And $20 of other bank services charge appear on the bank statement. So this is an adjustment to book to deduct from cash. I would have liked to have been a little further along for Thursday, unfortunately. There's no class on Thursday. I have a presentation on Friday. So we will pick up with the handout on chapter eight a week from today. And I will make sure that I adjust any of your due dates accordingly so that we won't run into anything. I'll do that after this class. All right. Oh. Sorry about that. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Let's have a good day. Thank you.